happened when Alexander the Great visited the Oracle at Siwa. After a legendary journey to the Oracle of Siwa in Egypt, Alexander the Great became far more than a mere mortal. When Alexander the Great invaded Egypt, he was already a hero and conqueror. Yet, during his short time in Egypt, he experienced something which appears to have deeply influenced him for the rest of his life. This event, the exact nature of which is shrouded in legend, occurred when Alexander the Great visited the Oracle at Siwa. At that time the Oracle at Siwa was one of the most famed oracles in the Eastern Mediterranean. Here, Alexander the Great transcended the realm of man and became if not a god, then the son of one. In 334 BCE, Alexander the Great crossed the Hellespont and began his invasion of the mighty Persian Empire. He reformed the tax code along Greek lines, organized the military forces to occupy the land, founded the city of Alexandria, restored temples to the Egyptian gods, dedicated new temples, and offered the traditional pharaonic sacrifices. Seeking to further legitimize his rule and follow in the footsteps of the heroes and conquerors of the past, Alexander the Great also decided to visit the oracle at Siwa. The oracle at Siwa was located in a deep depression known as the Siwa Oasis, which is located in an isolated part of the desert towards the northwestern border with Libya. Until the domestication of the camel, Siwa was too isolated to be fully incorporated with Egypt. The first signs of an Egyptian presence date to the 19th dynasty and a fort was constructed at the oasis. During the 26th dynasty, the pharaoh Amasis, are 570 to 526 BCE, built a shrine to Amun at the oasis to assert Egyptian control and win the favor of the Libyan tribes more fully. Amun was one of the chief Egyptian gods, who was worshipped as the king of the gods. The temple shows little Egyptian architectural influence, however, perhaps indicating that the religious practices were only superficially Egyptianized. The first Greek visitors to the oracle at Siwa were travelers on the caravan routes from Cyrenaica in the late 6th century. Quite impressed with what they found, the fame of the oracle soon spread throughout the Greek world. The Greeks equated Amun with Zeus and called the god worshipped at Siwa Amun Zeus. Indian king Croesus, are 560 to 546 BCE, an ally of the pharaoh Amasis, had sacrifices offered at the oracle at Siwa on his behalf, while Greek poet Pindar, c. 522 to 445 BCE, dedicated an ode and a statue to the god and the Athenian commander Simon, c. 510 to 450 BCE, sought its guidance. The Greeks also incorporated the oracle at Siwa into their legends claiming that the temple had been founded by Dionysus, visited by both Heracles and Perseus, and that the first sibyl of the temple was the sister of the sibyl at the temple at Dodona in Greece. Alexander the Great's motivations for seeking out the oracle at Siwa were likely twofold. He wanted to legitimize his rule in the eyes of the Egyptians by acting like a pharaoh and hoped that the oracle at Siwa would declare he was descended from a pharaonic line. To legitimize his rule in the eyes of the Egyptians by acting like a pharaoh and hoped that the oracle at Siwa would declare he was descended from a pharaonic line. It is also probable that because the oracle at Siwa was located on the border of Egypt he was hoping a demonstration by his forces would secure the good behavior of the Libyans and Greeks of Cyrenaica. Some of the sources suggest that an additional motivation was a desire to emulate the great conquerors and heroes of the past who had also visited the shrine. Accompanied by at least part of his army, Alexander the Great set off for the oracle at Siwa. According to some of the sources he was aided in his march by divine intervention. Copious amounts of rain fell slaking their thirst and they were guided by two snakes or ravens after the way was lost.